In this video, we shall be discussing the daily challenge asked in skill rack. So the question goes as follows. The program must accept an integer n as the input. The program must find the factors of n. Then the program must sort those factors in descending order based on their factors count. If more than one factors have the same factor count, the program must sort those factors in descending order. Finally, the program must print the sorted factors as the output. So what we understand from the question is we have to accept an integer n from the user and we should find the factors of it. The factor should be sorted descending order based upon the factor count of each and every factors of the n. So when we look into an example, the question would be even more clear. So let us take the first input. The input is 50 and the expected output is as below 50, 10, 25, 5, 2 and 1. So let us now find the factors of a number in an efficient approach. In this method of finding the factors, when the loop starts from 1, we first check whether when 50 divided by 1 leaves the remainder 0. So yes, 50 when divided by 1 leaves the remainder 0. So 1 is a factor of 50. And soon after that, we also add the quotient. So 50 when divided by 1 has the quotient 50. So 50 is also a factor of 50. And now the loop goes to 2. 50 when divided by 2 has the remainder 0. So 2 is a factor of 50. And we also add the quotient. So the quotient of quotient when 50 divided by 2 is 25. So 25 is also a factor. So let me just leave some space. And now the loop goes to 3. 3, 50 when divided by 3 doesn't leave the remainder 0. So 3 is not a factor and we also need not consider the quotient. Now the loop goes to 4. Again the remainder is not 0 so we need not consider the quotient. When 50, now the loop value is 5. 50 when divided by 5 leaves the remainder 0. So 5 is a factor of 50. And we also have to add the quotient. So the quotient which we get when 50 is divided by 5 is 10. Now the loop goes to 6. It doesn't leave the remainder 0. And the same case with 7. After 7 the loop breaks. So these are the factors which are obtained by this method. Now our task is to find the factors of every factors of n. So that is now we have to find the count of factors. We need not find the factors but we just need the count. So the count of factors 1, the count of factors 50, 2, 25 and so on. So the count is as 1 has the factor 1 so the count of factors is 1 2 has the factors 1 and 2 so the count is 2 5 has the factors 1 and 5 so the count is 2 10 has the factors 1 2 5 and 10 so the count is 4 25 has the factors 1 5 and 25 so the count is 3 similarly 50 has 6 factors so the count is 6 now how we are going to solve the program is we are going to create a two dimensional array. So the algorithm first find the factors of n which we have found here and stored it. Find the factor counts for every factor. So we are finding the count of factors for 1, 2, 5, 10 that is these values 1, 2, 4, 3, 6. So let us now look into the program so this is the program which i wrote there are two functions to which i will come in a short while let us now start from the main function 
here I have declared some variables and I have got an integer n as the input so here I am iterating the loop from 1 till the square root value of n and whenever the value of n divided by i leaves the remainder 0 we are just adding it into the array and the ith value is added in the 0th index and in the first index we are just adding the factors count which we are determining using a function user defined function so let us see how this function works this functions work pretty much in the same logic which we discussed instead of finding the factors we are just counting so as you can see we are just iterating from 1 till the square root of n and whenever n mod i is equal to equal to 0 we are just counting and if so let me just come to this if with an example and as we saw this c++ is for the quotient and this count is for the remainder now before we continue looking into the code let us see why there is a second if condition so we know this if condition so whenever it leaves the remainder 0 but let us look into this if condition with an example now let us now find the factors of integer 25 so as we know the loop iterates from 1 till 5 since the square root of 25 is 5 when the loop is 1 loop value is 1 25 by 1 leaves the remainder 0 so we are adding it and we are also adding the quotient that is 25 and now loop goes to 2 2 25 does is not divisible by 2 so we are just going to the next loop value 3 same case 25 is not divisible by 3 again for 4 again the condition fails so but now let uh, the loop value is 5 25 by 5 leaves the remainder 0 so 5 is added we have seen that whenever we whenever the remainder is 0 we also add that quotient value in this case we can clearly see that the remainder is 0 so 5 is added and the quotient which we get when 25 is divided by 5 is also 5 there is a repeating of 5 and 5 so in order to avoid this we add a if condition so as you can see assuming that the value at this particular case is 25 and the i value is 5 here this expression becomes 25 by 5 that is 5 and i value is also 5 so whenever this condition fails we are adding it so because if we put equal to equal to then or if we just write this code without uh, this if condition we will be having two files which will create errors so let me just give you here a command line quotient value so yeah when this loop executes our array would be looking like this so at the 0 0 we will be having 1 and the factor count will be 1 which we obtained from the function which we have seen the same logic instead of storing we are just counting remaining everything is same so at the end we will be having the array like this now our task is to sort this array I am doing sorting with bubble sort technique so this is the bubble sort technique and here in this bubble sort you will be seeing to swap that is because whenever we are swapping the factor count we should also swap the factor which is stored in the 0th index 
and again here there is another if condition and we have this if for sorting the elements which have the same factors count so here we are just using this condition if the factor count of arr of j is equal to equal to the factor count of arr of j plus 1 at that case clearly see that here we are not comparing with the factor count here we are comparing with the factors which is stored in the zeroth index and performing the swap operations again for both the factors count and the factor so this is the swap function so this is implemented using the pointers again that simple which doesn't need explanation so again by the end of this for loop we would be having the two dimensional array sorted as we want but the question is which was asked is to print only the factors so we are just printing the factors which are present in the zeroth column index let me just give the input 50 and check whether this works so the output we get is 50 10 25 5 2 2 2 and 1 you can see here 50 10 25 5 2 1 1 so we are getting the exact output so thanks for watching this video